Okay, so I suggest another short epistle. Philemon um, is a friend of the Apostle Paul, and, is a, and he is a Christian, and he is writing um, to Philemon about another guy whose name is Anisimus, and this Anisimus is a slave, and uh, he did something wrong to Philemon, and probably ran away, and then Paul kind of writes about him. So, Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved fellow worker, and Apiphia, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayers, because I hear of your love and of the faith that you have towards the Lord Jesus and for all the saints. And I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. For I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brother, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. Accordingly, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do what is required, Yet, for love's sake, I prefer to appeal to you, I, Paul, an old man, and now a prisoner also for Christ Jesus, I appeal to you for my child, Anesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful to you and to me. I am sending him back to you, sending my very heart. I would have been glad to keep him with me in order that he might serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I prefer to do nothing without your consent in order that your goodness might not be by compulsion but of your own accord. For this perhaps is why he was parted from you for a while that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave but more than a slave, as a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, receive him as you would receive me. If he has wronged you at all, or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, write this with my own hand. I would repay it to say nothing of your owning me, even your own self. Yes, brother, I want some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I write to you knowing that you will do even more than I say. At the same time, prepare a guest room for me, for I am hoping that through your prayers I will be graciously given to you. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus sends greetings to you, and so do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, and Luke, my fellow workers. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. So this is a very short uh, letter. So now, what is uh, so interesting about this letter? So uh, if we look at the greeting section, so verses 1 to uh, we can uh, see that Apostle Paul had uh, some fellow workers, right? And he even says, you know, fellow soldier. So he is Christ's soldier and he has fellow workers and fellow soldiers, right? And then also the church is, church meets in a house. So they do not have buildings yet because Christianity is persecuted. It will be another 230 years when Christianity will become, uh, not 30, I would say 250 years, when Christianity will become legal in, in the Roman Empire, and uh, later the Emperor Constantine will, uh, will start giving uh, gifts uh, to the church in the form of buildings and property and land. And so, but uh, at this point, uh, all we have is just the church uh, in the house, you know. Uh, which again tells us the church is not the building. So it's very interesting. We, we talked about that, that we are church, 
And when you look at the word church, the word church is ecclesia, which uh, in Greek the word is ecclesia, which uh, comes from ekaleo, which means uh, called, called from, called from the world to Christ, right? When you call somebody and people gather. So called ones, right? So it, it's people. So later, later we have this word church, now meaning, uh, you know, building institution but no and the church in your house grace to you and peace from God and Father and the Lord Jesus Christ so now uh, we have uh, Philemon here who became a Christian uh, it's very likely that you know Paul preached to him and he became a Christian and you can see that they are connected very well right so he you know Philemon helps him Philemon is involved in Paul's ministry uh, at the end of this, uh, at the end of this letter, um, Apostle Paul asks Philemon to prepare a room, a guest room. You know, I will come. You know, I know your love. You are in partnership with me. So here, verse 17. So if you consider me your partner, receive him as you would receive me. So we can see that uh, Philemon is a very good Christian, but he's also a rich Christian. As in any rich Christian, so he has slaves because in that society they would have slaves. And Onesimus is a slave. Uh, the fact that Onesimus is not with Philemon and that Paul has to write to Philemon about Onesimus, the slave, right, uh, means that uh, this Onesimus did something wrong and he ran away. So he ran away somehow, he ended up with Paul. So he met Paul in a different city you know, Paul is in prison now. Uh, Paul is under arrest. So, and so he meets Paul, and Paul preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ to him. And Nesimus becomes a Christian, right? So now, the Apostle Paul learns about this situation, and he writes to Philemon, the owner of Nesimus, this letter. And what he does here, so it's mind blowing, because. He invites Philemon, and we need to understand that society. So if you have a slave, so you have a complete control over that slave, and this slave is a runaway slave. So, and not only Paul asks him to forgive this slave, but also Apostle Paul asks him to treat, asks Philemon to treat Onesimus as, as, as an equal, as an equal because they both are now Christians. So which means for the Roman society, it's impossible. Well, you can forgive your slaves, maybe not punish your slave, but to be equal with your slave, no, it's impossible. But what the Apostle Paul invites Philemon to do, to consider Onesimus as his equal. So let us look at this. Let me say to release him. Because now in Christ there are no masters, no slaves, right? No free, uh, no women, no man, but new creature. So that is uh, not about our biological, you know, or social status. So it's about our status in Christ. Yeah, potentially release. Yes. Yes. So, uh, so let us go uh, over this again, starting with verse four. I think so. First, he praises uh, Philemon's love and faith, right? So. I thank you, my God, always when I remember you in my prayers, because I hear of your love and of the faith that you have toward the Lord Jesus and for all the saints. So this is what we would like to be, right? So it looks like that he is very sincere, you know, Christian, full of the Holy Spirit, has love for the Lord Jesus and for all the saints. So which means that he cares about them. He is involved in their lives, right? So, and I pray that the shedding of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing. Again, so you see sharing of your faith. So this Philemon is a really good guy. So he's rich, he's, I would say, he's intelligent, educated, but he's also a believer. So he's full of the spirit. And he loves Jesus, he loves other Christians. And again, that means that he would help them and would use, I, I need to tell you something, you know, the, the, you know, scholars, they kind of try, you know, try to figure out why Christianity was spreading so fast, you know. And they were trying to find, you know, 
earthly explanation. Of course, God is, you know, working in Christian. So, but they would try to look for, you know, mundane uh, explanation. But, but one thing which was very characteristic of early Christians that they cared for one another. Mm -hmm. And they cared for the widows and orphans. And uh, they would care not just for Christians, but non-Christians as well. That was, uh, that was very unusual back then. Because like today, people have clubs and unions. And if you're a member of this club, they will, you know, you will be able to use uh, something, you know, some uh, services or, you know, you will be entitled to something. But if you are not a member of that club, you know, today, golf club, like any club, so you cannot, uh, you don't have any privileges, right? So, but back then, Christians, they would take care of all the poor, and the most important thing, like, well, where I'm coming from, so to bury a person is expensive, but not that expensive. In the United States, I see that it's, it can be expensive to bury a person, so. Yesterday I drove uh, US 39 and uh, I saw a large poster which says cremation, the cheapest option or something, $1,250 all included. Well, it, it, it's, well, back then to bury someone was expensive as well, you know, to bury someone. So, and Christians will help with that. So they will help to give decent burial and, you know, they would care about the weather. So it's very unusual. So now when he says, I pray for the sharing of your faith and the, your love towards the Lord Jesus and for all uh, saints, it's very likely that Philemon was using his resources you know, to help those poor people around him, Christians. For the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. So which means uh, every good thing in us uh, is supposed to be known to manifest. So Jesus is in you, now it's supposed to be manifested, this fact that Jesus is in you. And he praises Philemon for this. For I have derived my joy and comfort from your love, my brother, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. And the saints are other Christians, right? So that means that he has been really, really good guy, <laughs> blessing, you know, God's instrument, God too. And then Paul starts talking about Anesimus. So it's verse 8. Accordingly, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do what is required, yet for love's sake I prefer to appeal to you. So again, so Paul is an apostle, so he can command, right? But instead he chooses to appeal. I, Paul, an old man, and now a prisoner also for Christ Jesus, I appeal to you for my child Anesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. So which means spiritual father. Which means I preached the Lord Jesus, I preached the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to him. He now became a believer. How they met, God knows. How Anesimus ended up with Paul. <laughs> so we don't know. But in any event, formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful to you and me. He was useless. He was not good, right? But now he is useful to you and me. We can see this transformation in Anisimus, right? Before he was a Christian, he was useless. It's very likely he stole something and then ran away from the useless. But now, because Christ lives in him, uh, he is now useful both to Paul and to Philemon. It's very interesting. Anisimus probably was not very... I mean, we can imagine that Philemon already was a Christian, and you see how Paul describes him, that he loves Jesus, he loves people, and Anisimus still didn't like him. Anisimus still ran away, right? So, but then he met Paul, and then something happened. So, which means that Anisimus even didn't like Philemon, who was a Christian. You know, Philemon was not a Iran, he was not like a really, you know, uh, cruel, bloodthirsty, you know, master. So he, 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 was, he was good. But I, I would like to be for God's kingdom useful as well, right? So, and, you know, many of us can be, I mean, Christians can be useless, but now useful, but now useful. 
It's an amazing transformation. I'm sending him back to you, sending my very heart, so he loves Onesimus. I would have been glad to keep him with me in order that he might serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I prefer to do nothing without your consent in order that your goodness might not be by compulsion by, of your own accord. Yeah, not by compulsion, but of your own accord. So, again, this is our relationship with God. So, even Jesus, you know, he, he, he doesn't force people to believe in him and follow him. So, he invites, right? So, that is why I'm kind of like, I'm a little bit uh, unhappy with uh, religious systems in general, even Christian, you know, religious systems such as schools or religious institutions, because sometimes it can become compulsion. And what we see as a result, there could be a lot of hypocrisy because of this. You can make people do something, they kind of agree to play by the rules, but their heart uh, has not changed, so and it becomes hypocrisy, and then all kinds of bad things. But this perhaps is why he was parted from you for a while, that you might have him back forever no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, as a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in flesh and in the Lord. So he offers for Lehman a new kind of relationship with uh, the slave of uh, Anasimus in Christ. And, uh, you know, when you think about the United States, you know, first I lived in the United Kingdom, <clears throat> and then I came to the United States. And in the United Kingdom, you still can see those, you know, differences like social class, and because they still have aristocracy and, you know, you know, dukes and uh, queens. And in the United States, you don't have all that. Like, kind of, technically, uh, people are equal, uh, but in reality, uh, because some people are richer than other people. So there is still inequality, and you can see this element of arrogance even in churches. Unfortunately, you can see that richer, you know, Christians can mistreat poorer Christians, like we are more important, or you know. So, and uh, this is a good reminder to all of us that we are all, you know, brothers and sisters in Christ, and in Christ we are equal. Because Philemon was like. <laughs> He was like, you know, heaven and earth. He was so different from Anesimus. That was a slave. He has, he was the lowest, you know, you know, lowest, lowest, lowest guy, you know, financially in terms of his social status. But Philemon is rich, he, he has slaves, he has completely different status. But in Christ, in Christ, they are equal. Okay? So, this is just amazing both in flesh and in the Lord. So now you have him as a beloved brother, right? And then Paul, uh, you will see that Paul plays here the role of Jesus Christ. Because what happened, yeah, he, he just does what Jesus did. Jesus has reconciled us with God the Father. We like nobodies. And then Jesus intervenes and he reconciles us with God the Father. And Paul does exactly the same. He reconciles Anisimus with Philemon. Okay? He's like, he's acting as Jesus. So if you consider me your partner, and here they use this word partner, but uh, in reality this word is coming from the word koinonia, which means fellowship. So partnership, fellowship, but it's kind of like we belong to one kind of family, one thing, we belong to Jesus. If you consider me your partner in faith, receive him as you will receive me. If he has wronged you at all or owes you anything, charge that to my account. So this is Jesus. I will pay for everything. So this is what Jesus does. He pays for everything, for all our sins. I, Paul, write this with my own hand. I will repay it to say nothing of your owning me, even your own self. You see how they, this new life in Christ, this faith, how appreciated this was, right? So it, it, it was valued. So now I think 
because we have technical Christianity everywhere, and the culture used to be technically Christian, I believe people lost this sense how, how valuable it is to be a Christian. Because Philemon, he had everything he needed. He had money, he had you know, possessions, he had everything. And now he had Christ. He is a new self. And this is what Paul is talking about. So you, you owe me in terms of I share the gospel with you. Now you know Jesus. Now you are a new person. Now you have eternal salvation. And Philemon is just like, wow. So he's so happy. But today, Christians, uh, Jesus died for your eternal life. Okay, okay. So hearing this all the time or from your childhood or something, it's somehow... I believe that it's very important for every Christian to revisit uh, and uh, maybe recommit, recommit again, refresh, you know, and to make an effort. Just to forget all you know and just read it as if you never heard this and then get this, you know, joy again. Because very often you hear from people, they come to church, they want to be uplifted, they want to hear that God loves them. So, and then they don't realize that the fact that Jesus, you know, died for them and this church exists at all is already the manifestation of God's love towards us, right? So, and that should make you so happy and joyous, and joyful. And that doesn't make people joyful because they don't understand the difference. They don't understand what Christ gives them. And, uh, yeah, I think it's uh, each of us should refresh, you know, our attitude towards what Jesus has done for us. Yes, brother, I want some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, okay, obedience, another good word, I write to you knowing that you will live in more than I say. At the same time, prepare a guest room for me, for I am hoping that through your prayers I will be graciously given to you. Okay, so now, Paul, Philemon, Anesimus, they are all brothers in Christ. They are all brothers in Christ. Jew, you know, Gentile, <laughs> slave, all brothers in Christ. And now, and, and, you know, now people can find so many ways to divide themselves, right? So, oh, you are from a different country or you are of a different race, or you are too poor for us, or you are, you know, all kind of, so, people lost it. The world, uh, people lost this idea of koinonia, that we are all one in Christ, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. They look at the world, and the world divides, you know, you are a loser, and you are kind of, uh, you made it, right? So, and, and churches follow unfortunately, they forget that we... You probably heard about those experiments when a pastor, a new pastor, would dress poorly. You know, his church never saw him before, but he would come dressed poorly and just see how they would react to him. And they ask him to leave, you know, because he's not adequately, you know, dressed. But he was just, you know, poorly, and they would kick him out. Then he will reveal that he is their pastor, and they would show him respect and love. And he said, "Well, you see, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's wrong." Okay, and then greetings for other fellow prisoners and Christians and fellow workers, and finally the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. So this is a short, uh, short epistle.